Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is Pensys Hacked AOL Account. This week, a journalist named Tony Cook from the Indie Star released an exclusive on how uh, Mike Pence, the current VP of the United States, used a private AOL account to send uh, messages containing sensitive government information. More importantly, Pence's account seems to have been hacked since he was the victim of a very common email scam where if a bad guy gains credentials and login onto one of your email accounts, he'll email all your contacts, maybe your family, claiming that you're stuck in some country asking you for money to help him out. In any case, Pence has since closed the account, but the journalist Cook actually, uh, through public record requests, got some of the emails to this account. And it appears that Pence was sending some very sensitive email using this private AOL account. On top of that, in the public request for this data, the government has redacted or not uh, returned some of those emails, suggesting that some of the data they have is actually pretty confidential. So all of this brings up analogies to the whole U.S. Hillary Clinton private email scandal. As you probably know if you live in the U.S., Hillary Clinton was accused of using a private email server to send sensitive government files as well. And many people thought this was a criminal act, although the FBI concluded that it was a bad idea and you shouldn't do it, but she wasn't doing anything criminal. In any case, it became a huge political issue during the presidential campaign, and Pence was one of the ones pushing, saying, that what uh, Hillary did was criminal. So it seems a little hypocritical that we now see he's using a private AOL account to actually send government email, albeit state government email as well. Now there's really two issues here that pundits are arguing about. One is really the data security implications of using private email servers or private email accounts, personal email accounts. Are those the same? Are those both insecure? Is one more insecure than the other? And what's the problem with using that for sensitive sensitive government uh, documents or email. And the other issue is really more kind of allegation and rumor. It's what was the motivation behind the actors doing this. Uh, a lot of people say that Clinton set up this private email server to hide data from the government and from the public. And now people are also saying perhaps Pence used this uh, personal AOL account to also hide data from the government. Now, I think the second issue, the whole motive behind this, are they trying to do this? to high data. That's not a question that anyone has evidence for, and I really want to discount it. But what I do want to comment on is whether it's a private server or it's using your personal cloud-based email account to send confidential documents, both are equally insecure or could be very insecure. Here's the issue. Uh, when you're sending confidential government email, the government needs to have some sort of control over that. That's why they want you to use their email servers and their, their accounts, their authentication process. They want to know that Mike Pence really is Mike Pence so that he has access to the confidential documents that only he should have access to. Now, if you transfer that email or those documents to a private server, the government loses control of that. Now, a private server can be super secure. If I personally, as a security expert, set up my own private server, it could actually be more secure than, say, a Google Cloud account because I could put strong authentication on it. I'm a security expert. I know how to use encryption. I can do all kinds of things as a security expert to make that a very secure server. The problem is, the government doesn't know whether or not Hillary's server was, was secure or not. They really have no insight into it. And that's ultimately the problem. If the government can't access the data themselves, or if they don't have insight into what security controls you put in front of your own server, to them, it's an insecure unknown entity. Now, why do I think Mike Pence's AOL account is the same thing? Well, for the very same reason, and in fact, I think it's actually worse. We know for a fact that these personal uh, cloud email accounts do not have the same security controls as uh, private government servers would have. For instance, these accounts, whether it be Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, AOL, whatever it is, all of them do have uh, potential security mechanisms built in. All of them will scan for spam, all of them will try to block malware, but whether or not you use two-factor authentication is up to you. 
These are created really to be consumer accounts. That means if you forget your password, they have an automated password recovery system that makes it relatively easy for you to get your password back. They even have tech support lines where you can call in to try to recover your password. They aren't made for government grade security. And that's why it's very common for hackers to gain passwords, gain your real credentials to these systems. Often the forget your password mechanisms aren't super secure. You know, if a bad guy can learn a little bit about you, they may be able to answer your security questions or they can call up the service and trick the support rep into resetting your account. Anyways, the point is, whether it be Hillary's private server or it be Pence's uh, AOL account, not considering the Pence account just as a bigger problem is Hillary's private server is hypocrisy. What Pence did is he put emails and government sensitive documents in the outside service that government checks and balances, government uh, audits, government security experts have no insight into. And while he did say that he, by the letter of the law, gave all the emails back to the government when he closed the account, the truth is any government official of any political party shouldn't really be using these personal servers or personal accounts for sensitive email. Anyways, my point is government employees of either party in state or federal levels need to start to pay more attention to some of the rules around data security. I bet you that different government agencies have very specific rules on how they need to handle confidential documents. And it doesn't matter if it's a private server or it's a public personal email address. You shouldn't be handling sensitive government information on either of those types of resources because they simply are not going to be as secure as using the government servers and the government processes. And by the way, this doesn't even talk about the fact that many government officials have to meet a certain level of transparency and have to make certain records always publicly available. Whether you put them on a private server or you put them on a personal email account that only you have the password to, you're putting information in a place where the government actually can't audit it, which is an issue. Now really, what does this have to do with us, of course, other than if you're a United States citizen, you might be interested in this debate. Well, there is a lot we can learn from this. The same type of data security applies all the time to businesses. And it's why we too need to be careful about how our employees use their personal accounts. There's a lot of data leaks that happen because of these personal accounts, because of putting things on Yahoo Mail or AOL Mail. So take for instance, an accountant uh, that's going on vacation, but they want to send a spreadsheet to their personal email email accounts so that when they're in the cabin skiing, they can bring up that document and get a little work done so they don't get behind. To them, there's no evil or malicious motivation here. They're just thinking, I'm going to work on this document in my personal email while I'm on my vacation. Now, what if this spreadsheet contains the credit cards of all your customers? Now they've actually taken that sensitive data out of your business's control and put it on their, say, AOL account, which could easily be hacked. It doesn't even have to be this particular employee getting malware and then getting hacked. These sorts of public email addresses often get taken over just because of bad guys leveraging issues and password reset mechanisms. So really the practical takeaway here is to train your employees how to handle confidential data. You know, sometimes it might actually be fine for them to share information to personal accounts. Uh, there's a lot of presentations I give that are not sensitive at all. I would give them to anyone in the world, even though they say WatchGuard on them. And I might actually send that through my Gmail account or put it on my personal Dropbox link. But when it comes to something that's sensitive to your government, to your business, or to yourself, that's when you need to be more careful. Finally, of course, if you do use these kind of freely available cloud email services, at least turn on some security. Almost every single one of them now offers two-factor or two step authentication. I doubt that Pence was using two-step authentication even though it was available to AOL or that particular attacker that took over his account and probably could have had access to all that sensitive information would never have been able to do that. So if you do use these public accounts, at least secure them. Anyways, very interesting story. I'd check out Tony Cook's article on it. And by the way, I have a quote in the article as well. One note before I end this video, next week I'll be traveling in Japan. And while I will try to get out the occasional video, I may not be able to do many. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.